Well, welcome once again. This is the Doctor of Digital Podcast, and my special guest today is Joe Balestrino. Now, he is a marketing expert, an author, and a coach, and if you want to know some of the hot topics that are going on in marketing today, that's why I got him on the show, and that's why I want you to listen, and also at the very end of the show, if you listen all the way through, got a special offer for you as well. So with that as an introduction, hey, Joe, how are you doing today? Thanks for coming on the show. Hey, Mick, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. You bet. So what we're interested in hearing, of course, is all the great things that you have to offer and to share with us. But one of the first questions I'm always interested in for anybody who comes on is like, tell us a little bit about your background. What's the story and how did you get to where you are today so that we understand and get some background on you? Yeah, so it's it's about 19 years now in the making. Uh, I started out 2004 was my first agency, my first podcast. And how I even got to that point was just really learning about the Internet when the Internet came around because I'm an old dude. And so, you know, the Internet back then, you know, you would go to the local library, sign up for an hour, you'd mess around on the Internet. And everybody was, you know, just, you know, enjoying the Internet, trying to discover it. And I was trying to figure out how to build a website or, you know, how it worked. And, you know, fast forward to 2004, I started learning about SEO in, in because I had started a company on developing websites and i was to me it was always okay i built a website but now what and then it marketing kind of came into play and i started coming across other business owners who were building websites but marketing was always the afterthought it was like let's build a website and then market it and then you realize that wait a minute the marketing should tie into the website and if the website doesn't have all the pieces needed then you can't really market it and so you, you're taking sure. a step forward to take a step back and so I started my agency, which was called Mr. SEO um, back in 2004 and uh, 2005 or six. I wrote my first book about um, local digital marketing. It's 2008, I sold the company. And then I've, you know, from 2008 to, I say about, I want to say six, seven years ago, I've worked, you know, in-house for companies like Yodel. I've done consulting for companies like Muscle and Fitness, Adweek, uh, Ziff Davis, Reader's Digest, a lot of publishers. And um, over the last six, seven years, I've, I have I started another agency and I do consulting primarily around Google Ads, SEO. Um, I do some coaching for uh, agencies who need help understanding how to run Google Ads for their clients. But um, yeah, my, my, the, how I got here was just out of pure curiosity and, and it just kind of took off. And uh, it's an industry that I love working in because it's always, it, it's, it's not your typical job. Every day is, is something sure. different. Yeah. So as a young man like you, I understand what you're saying. This is actually <laughs> over a period of time. And oh, so yeah. that really wants, uh, got some thoughts about that. So what would you say, and if it's possible, what are some of the changes that you've seen over the course of being in the internet now? I always say it's like back when the dinosaurs roamed the earth because it actually is a very long time. So what would you say are some of the biggest changes that you've seen in your experience? Yeah, the biggest changes is, is, is how, you know, mostly Google, because everybody pays attention to Google, how Google has changed over the years. It went from just looking at keyword density on a page. So we wanted to rank a page really well we would just stuff it with a bunch of keywords or hide the text and it would rank really well and as google's gotten smarter it's become more difficult and so mm -hmm. you can't really just rely on just one channel it's you know making sure you're diversified no matter what it is whether it's google facebook ads any kind of marketing email marketing uh it's typically when you just focus on one thing you you tend to run into problems so i think um, years ago, I would just focus just on Google and SEO. And but then I as I learned, you know, uh, you know, Google runs an update, all of a sudden, you go from getting a 1000 visits a day to zero. And now you're scratching your head. And now you're in a panic, because you don't know, you know, where where you're going to get business from. And so if anything's changed over time is to, you know, make sure that you know, I've diversified as much as I can by doing things like, you know, podcasts and, and, and writing blog content and, and things like that. Okay. So, and here's kind of the difficult question in some ways, because what you're explaining is a lot of changes and a lot of quick changes. So 
could you identify some of the hot areas now again not to put words in your mouth but people are talking about machine learning artificial intelligence things like that so what would you say are some of the hot areas that are really happening today i mean ai is big but ai has been around a while you know it, it's just starting to come to light now because it's in the news but but ai google's been using ai to write ads for for quite a while now and actually is pushing people more towards uh, using AI to generate ads and and, and to generate uh, leads and traffic to the website, but you know, AI is 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 fun, right? It's it's interesting. I've tried it to you know to come up with uh, copy. I wanted to see if I put you know my copy into these tools. Mm -hmm. What does it generate? Sure. But but Google's AI, as as smart as it is. It's still a way off, if, especially if you look at things like the way they write ads or, or how they go out and find traffic. It's a lot of times it's just it's just not uh, it's just not relevant or it's just not good enough as good as 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 a human could write it. Um, so it, while the technology is is getting better, it to, to me it it's not it's not really there yet for me to to really focus on. Interesting. Yeah. So there is a lot of uh, newsworthy stuff about it now. So, I mean, yeah, it's a hot topic, but that's interesting. And it's interesting perspective because it's not necessarily something you're saying to jump into, but you're aware of the changes which you've already outlined and described. When, how about if we take a look at businesses? So, I mean, what you might be able to do is offer, what would a typical business start to look at now and what kinds of things, given the changes and with AI or what Google has been doing over the years, what would you recommend business owners should be focusing on currently? I, I think what business owners should always be focused on is improving whatever it is that they're doing. If you're if you're running Google ads and you're doing, you know, Google has this thing called uh, Performance Max, which is pretty much their AI running and, and running ads for you. I would I would take a look at everything that you're doing and and see does it make sense is AI working for you is your ads working for you are you spending too much you know same thing with organic are you actually measuring performance because a lot of people don't measure the performance so for example if you have a phone number on your website and people can come to the website and call you you're not tracking that phone number how do you know where they came from how do you gauge the quality of the traffic that's coming in and calling you? Because if you're doing Google ads, Bing ads, SEO, Facebook ads, and all this other stuff, you're maybe doing guest posts and blog, you know, uh, podcasting and stuff like that. And everybody's coming to your website and you're getting leads. How do you know which one of those channels are bringing in those leads? If you don't know, then you don't know what to focus more on, what to drop, um, where to put more money. Uh, and a lot of businesses that I work with, don't do that because they either think it's complex. They don't know the technology exists. Um, but to me, like someone like me, the more data I have, the better performance I can get out of, you know, whatever it is I'm doing, because I'm, I'm able to tell not only just the, where the leads are coming from, but you know, phone calls can be recorded. So now you can gauge the quality of the phone call. So maybe you're running Google ads and you get 10 calls a week, but eight of them are not really good prospects. Well, then I can tie them back to a keyword, and now I can uh, now I can know that I can eliminate a keyword, even okay. though uh, you know on the high level it seems like it's a good lead, but you know it, when you start listening to the calls, you realize it's not. Hmm. So it's a really a matter of evaluating the data that you have and trying to pursue to improve your performance of your organization and your analytics. I guess that's what would, that would have come down to because most people are not evaluating that, correct? Yeah, they're just they 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 may be marketing, but when when I interview when I interview potential clients, I'll ask them, you know, where where are you getting most of your traffic from? Where are your leads coming from? Nine out of ten times, they have no idea. They know they're doing ads, they know they're doing this, they know they're doing that, but they don't know what the quality is or where they should focus. Or some some businesses say, hey, you know, we're we're doing something, but we're we're not we're not really sure what's working, and we want to invest more, but we don't know where to invest. And, and so that's where the tracking comes into play. So in terms of your own expertise, and especially since you've been in the field for so long, what kinds of things differentiate yourself, you think, from other people who might be dealing with businesses? And what sort of expertise do you have 
that would be an advantage that you feel in competitive with other businesses or other, because there's a lot of people who do marketing, a lot of people do SEO, let's say, and this is what I hear all the time. So what do you offer in terms of your specialty or expertise and how can you differentiate yourself from others? So, I mean, there's not too many people I come across that are in the space as long as I have. So I, I have, you know, a lot of experience going way back almost two decades at this point. Um, I like to think myself myself as a well-rounded individual, right? I started out in web development. I still do some web development. Um, I've worked as an agency owner. I've worked as a freelancer, as a consultant. I've worked in-house for companies. Um, I've written some books. I do some coaching. So th there's a lot to my experience, you know, granted it's, it's focused mostly on the SEO and, and, and paid search side, but you know, part of what, you know, attracts people to, to working with me is that they work with me, right? Usually if you work with um, anyone else, it's typically a company and you're just, you know, a number on a sheet. Uh, you get a project manager that may be here next month, may not be, or you're paying premium prices to work with a big agency, but the work is being handed over to a junior, you know, uh, person. And so, and, and then, you know, most people like it that there's, I had, they, they have easy access to me so they could just easily schedule a call or they can text or email. And it's, it, there's more of a connection and some people like that personalization that, that most agencies can't provide. And also, I think one other thing you said that's different is about you've got some background in terms of writing and what kind of books have you come out with? And maybe that would be uh, advantageous for a lot of people. Like, so what have you written? So I wrote a book on local search back in 2005 or so. So it's probably mostly dated. It's on Amazon if, if anybody cares to look at it. Uh, I wrote a book uh, two years ago on e-commerce marketing. So for people, it was specifically for people who were into using the Shopify platform. So I had built a, um, a site specifically to demonstrate in this book to show how you lay out, you know, your, your length of your collection pages and your product pages and, and how you can optimize it for search, even if you don't have a lot of backlinks and stuff, because there's things that you can do. Because think of long tail, more specific keywords, you get better results, easier to rank for, less competition. Um, and then I've written a couple of guides on Google News. So sometimes I work with publishers who want to get their uh, websites into Google News and they have to meet certain criteria. So I, I built a guide based on that. And, and right now I'm working on writing a book for um, local businesses that want to do, hmm. you know, a little bit of SEO, uh, social media, uh, just general business sense of, of marketing. Um, I'm, I'm starting one for the pest control industry specifically, and then I'm going to take that book and, and update it to be more, uh, sp you know, centralized for uh, service businesses in general that, you know, maybe they can't afford right now to hire a marketing agency, but, mm -hmm. you know, a book that gives them details on what to do and how to do it might be more appealing and more helpful. Have you found any differences between the industry you're coming from, the pest industry, pest industry, as opposed to others, or are there differences between industries that you can address and talk about? I, th I think every industry has its own specific challenges. It, and, and most of the time, it, it doesn't matter what business you're in. It really comes down to, you know, the location, right? If I work with lawyers in New York City, there's a lawyer every 20 steps. So it's really hard to, to, you know, if you're starting a law firm today, you're going up against, you know, law firms that have deeper pockets and doing it longer. Um, sure. So that you, you have you have that struggle and you have to be a little bit more creative on how you go about uh, getting clients. Pest control industry, it's a lot of people who um, see that the industry is growing. There's more money in it and they want to go out and, you know, there's a lot of news in the industry of, smaller businesses being acquired by larger companies. And, and that's exciting to think, oh, if I can just build my company, I, I may have the potential in a few years to get bought out, but they still don't understand the fundamentals of having a good website and their websites are done on Wix and they're done by themselves and, and mm -hmm. it doesn't ha have that professional look and feel. So 
every industry does something very similar. It just comes down to, you know, the competition and, and every industry has a little bit uh, nuance to it. Gotcha. So in the field for a long time, knowledgeable, written things, lots of information, and also unique take on the whole AI machine learning. And that's surprising, I think, for some people because they're really into it. Now, with all of the background and expertise, somebody's listening, they un understand your expertise, they understand your background, the length of experience that you have, and all these changes you've seen, how would you say that they should get a hold of you? What would you recommend? Because I think people would want to get in touch with you now. Oh, yeah. And th there's two ways you can reach out. Uh, my website, joeballestrino.com. Uh, you can send me a message there or connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I don't think there's too many Joe Ballestrinos out there, so it shouldn't be hard uh, to find me. Um, I'm on there all the time. I share a lot of great information. So if you're looking for a resource to to learn more about digital marketing in general, you know, just follow me on LinkedIn. Yeah, outstanding. Yeah, a lot of background. That's why I say I can relate because as a young man myself, I've been around in the internet business for quite a long time. So. Oh, I couldn't tell. No, you look like he's a really young guy. <laughs> well, I got a little bit more hair too. You got more hair. Yeah, you have more gray. But yeah, I, more gray. That's what people are asking. I got to the point where people are saying, are you retired? No, I'm not retired. Thank you very much. <laughs> so thank you so much, Joe. I appreciate all the expertise and the background you had, and especially taking some time out for us. I appreciate you coming on the show. Much obliged. No, I, appreciate, I appreciate you having me on the show. It was fun. You bet. So if you've been listening to the end, I also have a complimentary website analysis. So get in touch with me and also give you some feedback on a website, anything, just send me an address and I'll give you some feedback. I'm also the author of Burning America and the Best Interest of the Children. Thanks, Joe, for being us with us today and look forward to the next exciting interview. Uh, that's it for the Dr. Digital program. Until next time, Deus Volt.